Hi guys, welcome to the Off Grid family. Uh, we're going to be looking at our Victron Serbo GX, um, the little brain of our um, system really. Uh, this, this is a line of videos that we're doing on showing um, our system and how we've got it to work. It's a really complicated piece of equipment actually. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of research got to trying to find out where the wires have all got to go and everything like that. And um, uh, trying to find out how relays work. If you don't know how the relays work, it's, um, you know, it's, it's a lot of um, investment in time trying to work out how it's all got to go together. So all I can do is I just say I'm not an expert in anything electrical. I'm, I, I don't, you know, I don't work for Victron. I don't know the ins and outs of it. I've read what other people have talked about online and things like that and um, some of it turns out to be true what they've said and some of it isn't true and I hope I can be truthful and not give misinformation so you need to look up things double check but I'll tell you how ours is working and that's as fair as, as I can be um, there's a few things I can tell you about that I would like to do and I think I know how they work I just haven't got the money to do it yet and um, some of it can be quite exciting there's so much in this I don't even know I won't even need a lot of this stuff that it does but it's it's not a waste of money it's extra things I feel it, I needed it to do what it does and um, it does it very well um, I just don't need so many sensors perhaps as, as some people might like but um, so, so where do I start with the thing? I suppose I start at the top in, in, in the left hand corner. Got BMS cans up here, ports. And we're using one of them to go to our batteries. We've got a type A can cable there that comes up and goes into that BMS can port. And um, everything seems to be working fine on there. So I can say it's not a problem. We have had problems with our batteries, but it's not the cable, um, and it's not where we've got it. It worked fine all summer, and we've started having little internal failure alarms going off. <sighs> That's another story. Um, we're dealing with it with the supplier. They're telling us loads of things we can try and do to find out more information. Um, we've just got to go through the list, and um, we've we've um, we work full time. It's just a, it's a load more work. So. We'll get through that eventually, that's another story. Um, so yeah, that, that's where that goes. So our batteries go to that BMS can. And we've got, um, at the front here, we've got USB port. What The one nearest, um, there's like a, a big socket that goes in the top there, and that's for our touch screen. I'm not sure what you call that, but the one nearest that big socket that's for the touch screen, um, the USB port is for that touch screen to power it and um, I think having the touch screen is really good anyway. So and then we've got V direct ports up here um, go to our MPPTs. So our little MPPT has only got a VE direct port it hasn't got a VE CAN port like our big one. Our big one's got two VE CAN ports I think it might have two because you can actually join those together with VCANs. You can put more MPPTs and join them together. But you've got VCAN terminators that you're supposed to put at the ends on there. So we've got two ports on the MPPT. And as far as I can see, you've got to terminate the ends of that wire or next to the wire. It's not actually on the end of the wire um, with these terminators. So if I did use a VCAN cable to go to that VCAN port on that MPPT, the other port that's on it, I could terminate it with a VE CAN terminator. Um, it's something about stopping interference. Now, I've tried to read a lot into this and I, some people don't even bother using them and they have no problem at all. But I think if you've got a long length of cable, you can end up with more interference is what I'm, I think is is the problem um, so some people don't even bother with them so I suppose if you get interference if you think that things aren't right then it might be worth looking into it then we've got an Ethernet cable uh, for internet cable goes down to a power supply thing down there so 
got inverter cable to our VE bus port, V direct cables to our MPPTs. And that's that, that's, that, that's basically that across the top. And then you've got um, relays and things at the bottom here, and got, you've got the, a, a possibility of putting tank sensors in. You can have four tank sensors, so if you've got um, fresh water you want to monitor, uh, if you've got petrol or diesel or any sort of fuel or wastewater, you've got four of them, you can put sensors um, wired into them, and um, it measures resistance. Um, ohms apparently and reading from the manual depending on what you get you can use you can actually kind of custom configure it in some ways so they say so if you can custom configure it to have your own um what's it resistance range and your resistance range can be between zero and 264 ohms apparently i'm not going into that <clears throat> I might go into it later on. I haven't, I don't know, I haven't got the sensor. I don't know what they look like. Um, and I've got bigger things going on than, than, than those sensors at the moment. If I had water in a thing, I'd have a look and see what it is. But very handy, very handy later on. I think I might try and do a water one. Um, when I get a bigger tank, we've got to get water sussed down here first before I go into anything like that. We've got temperature sensors. I don't think I'll go into getting temperature sensors, but it's something you can do. It doesn't look too difficult to do that. Um, I think uh, in here, I've already got temperature sensors in the batteries. They tell me what temperature. I've got a radiator that works with Wi-Fi and I can check up on it and make sure the temperature is right in this room. It's got a very low down sensor in the bottom of it, which is good because it's level with the pylon techs. Um, I am looking at getting a heat mat for underneath in here because that does use quite a lot of power keeping this warm. Uh, up here <coughs> um, but it's, it's lovely and warm in here it's warmer than the house and then we've got digital input so you can put stuff in so you can you can have digital inputs for say fire alarm or door bell alarms things like that uh, door alarms and there's four of those as well so you can put stuff in there inputs on for that and then we come to relay so relay um, relay one is the one I'm really interested in because you can have a, a generator start stop function and we've got a little computer thing up there our touch screen and you can set parameters so if it, the, the batteries reach 20% um, DOD it will cut in and charge them up which I think is a really good safety thing if you don't want to run out um, I'm excited to do that I've been looking and reading someone has helped me out online and I do trust what they're saying they've got the system that works it took me ages to get a reply because I put this out there a long time ago because I didn't have a clue I'd never seen anything like that those little tiny um, things the little push things you've got to push wires in the end so you put some terminals on these cables and you push them you can get use a screwdriver and push the, the orange bit in and it, it's like a spring and then push these in and then release and then they're in there in those little tiny um, relay housing I should call it I'm not sure and um, basically to make a generator work on here it looks like you need to have one that's got a two wire start function on it two wire start system or I've seen them called different things two wire start generator two wire auto start system for the generator and basically if you get that it's easy mine isn't and um, I don't know what to do I, I, I was contemplating getting a different generator um, not because of this because I'd like a bigger diesel one R1 we bought because security wasn't good here and it's portable we can move it out away stop people stealing it when we are working we're a bit more secure now we've got much more things in place and we could do with a big old uh, diesel um, generator in the future. And if I got one, I'd like it to be a two wire start type generator. Um, you can get a kit for R1, it's nearly 300 pounds. 
um, and it's a little black box with wires coming out, little box of magic. I have no idea what's in it or how to do it. Uh, I'm sure there's people online that know how to change all that over to get it working in a cheap way. Um, we just can't go there. We haven't got time to look into it um, for a start. Um, I'm too busy with work and and the off-grid life thing to go into that part just yet. But um, so basically, um, from from being told what you need, and it does make perfect sense to me. So you want the NO relay. So this on here on the relays. NO is COM, there's NC, NO is normally open, so normally open circuit. NC is normally closed circuit. The way it works, it's my understanding, and this the way this guy explained it, because he um, he actually has got the system working, is normally open, is you've got, you've got a circuit. Um, so the circuit goes along like this, uh, normally open, so it's it's not activated, it's off. Normally closed, it will be activated, it will be on. So you want a normally open circuit. So you want NO and COM. So you wire that into there, um, and then things should work. And it's, it just seems so simple when you really think about it. Um, NO relay that closes on demand, you need to use the you need to use the common and NO ports on relay one and only relay one is for the generator. So I think we've covered everything on here, so I'll just um, try and show you up close now. So here we go. So we'd wire in NO and COM ports on this side um, for our generator, a um, two wire start generator. If we get one or if we buy the kit to convert it. And then you've got your tank sensor things here, temperature, there's four of each, digital inputs. This is how we've got our stuff wired in up here. Um, v direct for MPPTs. Um, we've got a um, BMS type A cable for our batteries. And we've got our Ethernet internet cable thing going in here. And in the back there, we've got our um, Quattro um, uh, cable, which is a, a VE bus cable. Um, but we haven't got a VE can things running off the stuff, so they're just they're just in there really. And um, yeah, if we had our, so I could show you our um, MPPT. It's got VE can ports under there and then you'd you'd put your VCAN cable in one and put your V the terminator in the other and, and that's what you're supposed to do is the ends apparently. So but we haven't got that. We haven't needed it. I'm sure it's a good function you could have a lot more stuff run off. Uh, find a lot more for information, use that to more of an extent that big MPPT. This one hasn't got a VCAN port on it by those things. Yeah so and then we've got the touch screen stuff. So we've got this big thing here that comes in from the touch screen. And then the little power cable that's USB that goes in this side. So you can go into this and um, set uh, generator conditions. Go to menu, go to settings. Go to generator start stop. Do manual settings, go to settings again. Quiet hours you can set. Go to conditions. And then you can enable battery socks so you can have it come on automatically. Um, your batteries drop to 25%. Um, unless start value during quiet hours, we don't care about that. Um, stop when battery stop is higher than 50%. I think I set that, so I, so get it to 50% and then wanted it to stop charging. And that's it, that's a quite simple thing. Once you've got a generator, all the wiring that can do it, um, you're away.
And that's, that's probably the most important thing for us is this little bit here, especially being off grid. But you've got manual start and stuff, so it's a pretty cool bit of kit. I'm trying to find that, that um, generator start thing online is really difficult. So I hope I've helped someone to find that because if people are all looking, because I couldn't find anything about that generator um, start stop um, relay. I mean, some people find it so simple. Once you know, you know, if you know how those things work, um, if you're, I mean, I've never used anything like that, those little push things, you know, we're not, I'm not um, electrically minded at all. So that could help somebody out. Uh, I'm pleased about that. Um, I, I can't wait to uh, be able to have a go at that, really. Um, it, will, it will make uh, make things more interesting, being able to just have it start itself. So I think we've covered everything on the Servo GX. So I um, hope I've, uh, you find this useful. Um, it, uh, it's just my experience of um, what we've done and what is working um, your system will be different and you'll have to do that spend that investment and those hours uh, reading the manuals and everything like I've had to do I hope you found this useful and uh, I hope to see you again soon thanks for watching